I'd be glad to email you back the article. But it, it does sort of make you wonder why do things come and go? Why, why do rates vary between countries? Um, it's probably too exploratory to compare across countries. But even in Canada, we see Crohn's rates varying, say, as the highest in some groups and the lowest in the Aboriginal and First Nations. And those happen to be the parts of Canada that have the highest tuberculosis rates in Canada. Does, Did um, I answer your question? I, I think a little bit, yeah, okay. that, that inverse relationship between TB and, and Crohn's is interesting. Does pasteurization kill MAP? Um, I, I don't know if it kills, but pasteurization, sorry, I'm going to have to sit back. The way things like pasteurization and autoclaving work are, believe it or not, we always say, you know, that kills or isn't, and it should be an easy outcome. But they're actually kind of like probabilistic. It's like if I put a trillion bacteria into a pasteurizer, do I get a billion, do I get a million, or do I get a thousand? So pasteurization, if you put in a 100, nothing comes out. If you put in a trillion, maybe a 100 come out. So there's a lot of discussion about whether pasteurization is good enough for MAP. What I think is probably a better question is not asking whether, you know, if I put in a trillion, I get a hundred, okay, is, is a hundred matters? Like, should I worry about a hundred? If pasteurization reduces it so much, is that last 20 or 30 bacteria likely to cause disease? Now, I have a model, I don't know if this is going to go on YouTube, so I have to be careful, but if I think of what's coming out of a cow and I think of what could end up on my fork, a lot of people say cows, therefore milk. It's a little bit the logical impulse. It's the joke with children, you know, when a cow's going to milk. But in fact, between a cow and a human plate, milk has a 100-year-old industry trying to get rid of mycobacteria. So, you know, you have people who get up every morning who go to the factory to knock mycobacteria out of their product. You do not have that for hamburgers. We do not have that for water. We do not have that when spinach gets contaminated. We've, you know, for E. coli 157, all kinds of things have become contaminated. So I believe we should probably de-emphasize the investigation of milk and take a step back and say, look, if MAP is a risk, how are, what are the many ways MAP can get to people without saying, you know, milk is a problem? I don't know if milk is a problem, quite honestly. Okay. You had a question? No, good. Okay. Um, so as I was saying, next. So, well, I'm just thinking back to originally, like 35 years ago, that was one of, I think there's only two or three probable what they thought caused Crohn's disease. And one of them, this is what I was told as a young child, was from drinking unpasteurized. That's why I thought maybe your association, the first question was kind of like that. And I did as a young child. Yeah, you know, I, I, I really can't, can't know that well, right? So, if a cow has Yoni's disease, the milk probably is not likely to be secreting lots of mycobacteria, maybe in tuberculosis, but rather it can get contaminated in the barnyard, in the stalls, by the presence of things that may have contaminated on the outside of the others and stuff like that. If that's the case, I'm not there. People in the room can tell me. But we might be talking about a couple of thousand of bacteria, the kind of stuff you might be able to wash away, but not millions and trillions and stuff. On the other hand, if a cow has advanced disease and it is um, rendered into hamburger, maybe that's a concern. And some people in risk management have to do that kind of research to try to really line these up before we just start to say it's the dairy industry's fault. I don't think we have any evidence that the dairy industry is a problem, and they have an industry that tries to reduce mycobacteria. Do you know if, if the deer population would have this bacteria? In, in uh, New Zealand, it is found in farm deer. And, um, and it has been brought to my attention. Um, I happen to be a vegetarian, so I can't really comment on eating deer meat. Um, but I've, it's been brought to my attention that it's usually not cooked as thoroughly as, as other meat. But uh, we don't know if deer is a risk either. Yes, please. I'm sure this is overly simplistic, but uh, shouldn't there be a, just a lesser incidence of drones in Buddhists and Hindus that should be easily if this is to cause? Um, well, well, not necessarily. So, um, so 
my overly simplistic way is to say, look, if I don't know how MAP can get to people, why don't I look at the research on its room, roommate, which is truly its roommate, right? Because it lives next to E. coli 157. They live in the same place, right? The reservoir of E. coli 157 is the cattle gut. And if I was to just go on Google and type E. coli 157 outbreak, right? You can do that right now. You'll find it's been in spinach. You'll find it's been in apple juice. You'll find that it's been in petting zoos. You'll find that it's in hamburgers. So it's not as if Muslims and Buddhists are suddenly going to be, you know, risk negative because of the different ways that things move around. Don't forget that cattle feces, to my knowledge, are also uh, described as what we call manure, right? So what comes out of one place is, is the place where you grow produce. So there probably are uh, some variances across religious and cultural groups. But there also, to my knowledge, are variances across immigration groups. I have been told, and I don't know Mark's experience here, but then most of all, families from certain countries, when they see Crohn's disease, it's typically a child born in Canada. And the siblings who were born overseas, they don't see as much Crohn's disease. So now you have to say, well, it's because they're from India or it's because they're Buddhist. You know, those sorts of things make it harder. It's not an overly simplistic question. It's a great question. It's a hard one to answer. Thank you.